You are listening to CORE, a show on Code Zero Radio that plays bands located in the Fox Cities, a show to find and discover new music. Hosted by Andy McNamara. Hello everybody, welcome to Fox Cities CORE on WCZR Code Zero Radio. We are doing a take two because the audio and video issues, we want to make sure that we have everything set right um, so that we're not wasting your time or the Laylees. And I'll mention off the top of the show, uh, WCZR, if this is your first time tuning in, is a streaming internet station. We are based out of the Fox Cities. We play a lot, a ton of Fox Cities and Wisconsin music. You can tune in by going to our website at live.codezeroradio.com. You can also download our app that is available on your Apple or Android device. And if you have a smart speaker like an Alexa or a Google uh, Home device, you can ask it to play Code Zero Radio on TuneIn, which is pretty cool. My guest today, a band that's been around since prior to 2010, they have a, just a very vast discography out. They write great rock songs. It brings me great pleasure to welcome to the show the Lately. Hey, <laughs> how are you guys doing? Good. Really good. Really good. So let's skim through kind of what we talked about earlier. The three of you were in a band called Flat Lease Crush. Yes. Crush here. Where did that name come from? Because I I was curious. <clears throat> that, you were in bands prior to that, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. Yeah. We were in a couple before that. That name was the name of a song from a another band that I really liked. But I think... We took that name because uh, Flatley was the guy from Lord of the Dance or something. Like yeah, that? yeah, something like that. Yep. And we <laughs> thought that it was really fun. So, who who did you get to pose for the cover of that? Well, I don't know if she would <laughs> appreciate being named at this <laughs> point in time, <laughs> but it was a girl we knew just from high school. Um, I was honestly very surprised that she did it. And we were like 60 and had no <laughs> business <laughs> doing so it was, anything like that. Is that one that you guys, did you copy it on CDRs or was that professionally sent in? That was CDRs, I think. Yep. Okay. I think we uh, even like did the sh- uh, shrink wrap ourselves too. Yep. So the hair dryer is All that right. what? You... <laughs> it, it was a professional heat gun. <laughs> <laughs> and then the... we were very serious. <laughs> and then after that band, you guys met down in Madison, and I, I know the answer now, but I didn't prior. So a lot of the the websites here, Facebook and stuff, says you met at a party. People said you look like you should be in a band, so you started one. You mentioned that that's not entirely true. Yeah, we um, did party and we were in a band. But um, no, that just kind of came about because any time that you go to like write a like band like thing, it just feels so self-important and weird that we try to... Um, joke it off a bit to make us feel less dorky, I think. <laughs> do, do you guys like the aspect of writing biographical things? <laughs> it's maybe the worst part yeah. of being in a band. It, it's interesting because some, some bands are really good at it, but you almost have to talk about yourself in the third person and yeah, like kind weird. of brag yourself up about your accomplishments. I, I like the fact there's not a lot out there about you guys. I have like deep uh, skepticism of the the people who are good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so that that self titled comes out and it's received. I think you said you did maybe a hundred copies of it. Yep. And it, at that point, did you know that the lately would be around? You know, ten plus years later. I think so. If only because uh, we were such good like friends you know there's um there's certainly something to be said for like performing music 
with people who you love. And I, I think that's what this is. And also the three of us, we've been playing since we since we learned how to play. We've been playing together, so. You've, a couple of you have musical parents. Did your parents help you learn instruments at all or did it was it something that you just naturally took interest in and picked up it i mean it really helps having having instruments around the house but yeah i mean my dad taught us all how to play um your dad taught you how to play drums first right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more of a here you go, figure it out approach. But <laughs> yeah, he was definitely there to guide me a little bit on that. As far as the the drums, I mean, was that something you just didn't didn't really want to continue? I was never a good drummer. Uh, it was more of a want to be good but not put in the effort type situation. Because, you know, <laughs> at that age in your life, 16, I, I didn't really start drumming until I was like 12, 13. And I, I didn't take it seriously till 13, 14. So I was already like kind of behind a cusp. And then you get into, you know, freshman year in high school and your progress change a little bit. So, <laughs> yeah. So what made you decide to pick up a bass? Uh, actually, my high school band teacher, John Delaney. Yeah, he was just a wealth of information and always there for me. And, and one day, uh, uh, our bass player in our jazz band didn't show up. So he just take it, sit down. <laughs> And then, yeah, the kind of rest was history with that. When So when you guys met each other, uh, it was it was at school? Well, do you, that's Do you recall the first time you met I each other? I met him, yeah. but Ike uh, and I were, we've known each other, mm, well, he's older, so like mm, my whole life, but you were too. Yeah, yeah our parents were living next door to each other before we were both born, so. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. We've known each other our whole lives. Yeah, forever. So it's natural that you'd start a band together. Yeah. How could you not? Do you guys have the uh, the unspoken kind of connection where you you know how, like, each other's songwriting process is, and when you start a song, you kind of know where to go automatically just because you're so accustomed to the other's sort of writing style yeah 100 yeah, percent. and i mean we kind of we learn how to play together too so so that how i mean so we would sit around all day and just like play to i mean uh, other albums and stuff mm-hmm. for our whole life so that's helped a lot too i think what kind of music were you listening to when you were Let's uh, say high school, <laughs> high school well, age. Uh, a weird mix of like thrash metal, so like Slayer and stuff, and Collective Soul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting combo. Which explains a lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I don't know what, what were you guys listening to. Uh, the exact same stuff. My story's a little different. I had three sisters, so it was a lot of. Uh, boy band stuff in the <laughs> house but I, I i listened to hard rock ish in my high school years yeah hard rock ish like not nickelback well a song or two probably but i was i was a godsmack fanatic for a little while until i just kind of opened my my eyes up to writing styles and whatnot and the complexity of music and then i got more into yeah actually more metalish stuff uh but yeah no, I listened to a lot of stuff in high school. My sisters forced a lot of stuff on me. <laughs> <laughs> when when you're listening to music today, do you find yourself listening to a lot of the stuff you listen to when you're younger? Or are you no. actively trying to discover new new music? I have to actively discover new music, but what I find myself listening to now is things with really good written uh, lyrics. Uh, not so much pop country, but a lot of older country I find myself going to now. Uh, a lot of good stories in music, and I'll, yeah, that's if I'm listening to music doing something, it's kind of that. But if I'm listening to music to explore some, I just turn on uh, any Spotify and just do random things, and yeah. Do you guys feel that Spotify has somewhat? That you're either pro or anti Spotify. Do you feel Spotify helped the music industry or hurt it 
I know you've got, I think, two releases on Spotify currently. Um, there's a lot. It's very complicated. Personally, I kind of love it because it has, it has made, at least for me, it has made um, discovering new music so easy. And I know that it was always, I mean, out there, but now it kind of does all of the work for you. And that, I mean, I spend so much time having to learn other music that the times that I turn it on to just enjoy it, um, before I always choose you know an album that I know I love and now it's almost never that honestly it's always just turning on something and seeing what there is yeah I think it the same it's it's a good discovery tool and I mean it's convenient because you know if, if you find something you really love and you want to go purchase it you know I still go to a record store all the time and purchase it but like it's nice to have it on your phone as well, you know, that type of thing. So I think, I think it's not an either or situation, I guess for me, but yeah, more I like both sides of the coin. Yeah, no, I agree to that. I use Sam for a lot of years on uh, getting new influences and whatnot. Uh, and yes, ever since, you know, internet radio across the board, it's just interesting to hear a lot. It's easier to hear a lot of things you wouldn't normally pick up. Have you guys done a vinyl release yet? A very limited one. We had we had done a a, a little um, lathe cut seven inch, but beyond that, we haven't done any one. Not any yet. yet. We um, are talking about doing it for the new songs, but um, apparently it's like an eight month wait and all of that thing. And who wants? We have not put out an album in like six years so another eight <laughs> months seems excessive did uh when when COVID hit did did the band kind of go into hibernation or were you guys sort of swapping ideas back and forth we hibernated a lot yeah mm -hmm. we um basically we've had a whole album done for like six years and then decide that i mean it has happened now like three times that we have it basically done, decide that we don't like it, and then start over. And then COVID just kind of killed it. But now I think I think it's back. I think we have a ton of songs now that we're happy with. And I don't know, it's weird. And we just finished up two that we've had I guess we had started recording those. These are probably the earliest ones, I think. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. So Happy For You is a new song that's an old song. So it's actually a song that is on that first album called called uh, Hey Girl. And we played it a lot like 10 years ago, haven't since, and then we just kind of rewrote it completely and it's not really the same song at all anymore. So I think there's a, a lot of that on these newer songs too. I mean, old songs, old ideas that we've had now forever and that we have uh, rewritten 10 times and all of that thing. And Sam, you're a really good engineer. You've, you've done a lot of projects for a, a lot of bands. You were uh, at one point stationed at the Refuge. And are you still working on uh, other bands' projects? Yeah, yeah. Tons of them. Um, these days, after COVID, it got a bit slow. But um, we do a lot of like tv stuff there now too so some like soundtrack things uh for 
for movies and TV and all of that stuff. Yeah, I think I, I see that uh, Corey Chisel released a, a cover with with you on it of a Chris Isaac song. Yeah, yeah, that was a whole lot of fun. I think that was originally done for a movie, and then got released on a compilation, and so now it's kind of its own thing that exists out there <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> So the the fact that you're so good at engineering, I, I know a lot, some of your projects you've you recorded at Studio H, and then you mentioned the the place in Madison. I'm guessing you're doing most of your recording yourself now. Yep. Does that does that kind of make the projects take a little longer because you've got the time to be critical and sort of revisit things versus you're paying to go record with somebody else and you kind of have to have it all nailed down. One hundred percent. Yeah. It's the the same thing. Where, like, every study hates how they sound and they hear it back. And it's, like, everything I do that's us, like, never sounds good to me. Or it's, like, there's always something that should be different. And it's, it's hard. It's really hard to actually say that something's done when you're when you've had your hand in like every aspect of it what's normally the hardest part of of recording is it the like guitar bass drums vocals um it depends i think a lot of i mean especially for these songs it's just having to to redo it so much so then kind of kind of stuff starts to kind of get out of groove a bit and so you end up like doing another take of the drums and then eh, that sounds good but now like other things are ahead of it and stuff mm -hmm. and so like it's just this like house of cards in a way do, do the the rest of the the band are they as picky as, as you as far as sounds? Or do you guys get kind of frustrated with Sam's sort of ear to, to find detail? No, I think I think I get pretty picky sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just slow on the idea, so I'm always one step behind the guys. <laughs> but it's, it's always worked out really well. Uh, so then after the, uh, the self-titled, you guys put out Dirty Magazines. And I love the cover on this this album <laughs> it might be my favorite uh uh the lately cover a cd cover i know that um ryan you're in the art is this one that you designed uh yeah so we actually self-shot that and yeah that was god i haven't <laughs> seen this in, in a while long. Too. yeah that was at my house it's so funny we all have on vests. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask about that. So you all have on vest, which is pretty funny. Yeah, and then he has his shirt off yep, under Mike's... the vest. <laughs> I, it, 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 it was kind of a send off of all of the like really, like serious like album covers, and I think that we did it too well because people <laughs> took it really seriously. <laughs> I think it's a it's a really cool cover, and Ryan, you've I've seen some of your art. Have you always been into art, or was that something that that you more recently got into? No, uh, always kind of been into it, and um, that's actually what I went to school for. But yeah, it's just something that I've always done, um, you know, since I was little. And I feel like it's one of those things where, like, if people start acknowledging that you're good at something from an early age, you kind of take that to heart and and kind of run with it and you know as a kid I was a pretty pretty shy kid so I just spent a lot of time drawing and stuff and and naturally when I when it came time to go to school I was like well I want to do something that I'm going to be very serious about so I went um, to Milwaukee for painting and drawing but but he's also really good at like taking pictures and all that which is turns out pretty helpful when yeah. you're in a band so have you did I mean you guys have a, a video out that we're gonna play later? Have you done any like video editing stuff or any kind no, of? No, uh, Sam 
has been doing a lot of that actually. So yeah. it's out it's, very similar to like song editing, honestly. So it's just you're just taking things and <laughs> and you're moving them around <laughs> on a screen and uh I don't know, it's fun. Yeah. Ryan, do you have a favorite medium? Uh, do you enjoy painting or uh, pencil? Yeah. Oil painting mostly is the my primary medium, I guess you'd say. <laughs> do you actively participate in art shows? And... Yep. Yeah, um, I've done a few things as far as locally. I've shown at um, the Trout Museum more recently. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, I've been kind of kind of relaxed on that uh, for a bit now because just been working a lot and <laughs> and working on other things but but yeah you guys this is time for our highly popular segment band reaction it's where we play a clip from a past guest and then you listen to it and then we get your reaction all right Are you up for it? this this one is with uh frank anderson a legend of course and indeed the uh the man behind wisconsinology and probably countless recordings that people don't even know frank plays on yeah. So this is Frank from a few weeks ago. Band reaction. Band reaction. So do you feel that Appleton is... Appleton's in danger. You have who, a... who do I tell Appleton's <laughs> in danger? Over that, that's good. Danger. I have this to say, Appleton is in danger of not rocking. Everybody's all of a sudden into soft music. Everybody I know, they've gone into themselves. Maybe it's a pandemic. Do you feel that model of music has kind of made people want to play more like soft rock? I don't know. Or have we imported all these soft people? I don't know. So, some play heavy. I don't uh, Maybe I didn't see the bands that rock. But I'm talking about Appleton artists right now, getting real soft. You know, listening to things like Steely Dan, I mean, that doesn't do anybody any good. Do you feel that there is a way to fix this problem? We need a new generation dedicated to rock. <laughs> <laughs> any reaction to that? I mean, what else is there to say yeah, yeah. <laughs> all, he's really. right no i think i mean i love fr uh, frank and he's right i think people uh, oftentimes forget that music should be fun and man i've seen a lot of shows where it looks like no one is having fun like not the <laughs> band not the, cr the the audience not the anybody and yeah. i think that for those who rock, that's a very um, disheartening trend. <laughs> I think the lately rocks. Like I've I've seen you guys and and you do it's almost like a a gun salute at the end of some of your shows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that we rock too. Um, I think there's times that we maybe we we rock too hard. Or too, maybe too loudly. But, yeah. I think Frank would approve. I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there something that you do to, to prepare when you're going to play a show? And especially, like, after pandemic where you, you haven't played for a while. I know you had a show, I think, a, a month or, a month ago? About. Yeah, something like was that. It, it was a kind of weird getting back into the, the groove of playing a show after a long break. Yes super weird also like it's it's super super bizarre to like play songs again that you wrote a, a long time ago and then haven't played and then you're it's almost feels like they're like some somebody else's songs too it's a really strange feeling and also i mean like we had played together basically every week for 20 years almost and so to then not even like see each other for 
over over a year was really strange yeah that said i mean like getting back into it it's it's definitely cool that it didn't seem like there was any um you know misstep there it was it just felt supernatural and like we hadn't taken all that time off you know but but yeah do you get nervous before shows not really no is there anything that annoys you about playing shows as far as from an audience perspective or a venue perspective sketchy sound guys (laughs) (laughs) Not not necessarily bad sound guys just they may be very good just when they're when they seem sketchy that's when i get nervous i hate hauling gear a lot but really i also hate doing shows that are like super long i don't know like if you've had to do a whole it's hard to rock hard for like three hours like nobody is able to really actually rock for like more than an hour except maybe no one i don't (laughs) think anyone can so uh there was a point in time when we were doing like three hours a night almost all our own songs and that just never again (laughs) (laughs) i I don't think people realize either it's a quite a workout up there like three hours you're sore the next day and not only from hauling the equipment but just standing there with the instrument strapped to you and Mm -hmm. and we had like hauled all our own sound done our own sound at those shows it's just exhausting you guys heard the sump pump still works down here, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, knew right I knew what it was right away. <laughs> so, uh, the, we're going to be taking questions during the show. I'll, I'll put the, the phone number up, but I, I want to thank you guys. You uh, have this prize pack that we're going to be giving away today with a, a ton of swag in it, a CD, a cassette, a shirt, and a hat. Do you guys have fun putting the, you, doing the merchandise for the band? Yeah, it's a, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's something where I think it's just another way to get creative. Like we've done some limited limited package stuff that's always, you know, seemed to go over pretty well and I think moving forward as far as physical stuff goes, you know, releases and stuff like that, I think just trying to expand on that, um doing more unique packaging and stuff like that, I think it's fun for us, and I think it's fun for you know people that are buying it. So, do you enjoy it when you're working on a new album? Do you enjoy doing the artwork more or recording the songs? Recording the songs, I think a, a lot of the recent artwork Sam and I have been collaborating on and sending it back and forth, which I feel like has been that's fun, pretty yeah. fun, yeah. And Sam, since you've been doing more video editing lately, can we expect a new video from the lately anytime yeah. soon? Yeah, I think that the plan as of now is I think that we've got about 10 songs that are almost done and to do a song every like few weeks do like a a like a video or something and just kind of put it out that way. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> uh uh, there are two two songs all done, all set, and all of the others are close. But we have said that <laughs> a, a lot of times before. So, out of your catalog, is there a, a song? I'll ask each of you what your favorite song from the lately is, and your least favorite song from the lately. Okay. Sam, we'll start with you. I think my favorite song is the the newest one and my least favorite are all of the old ones <laughs> they all sound i it, it, it's like that same thing where anytime that you hear your old stuff it just like you can't hear anything except like what you would change the how how like stupid you sound in like <laughs> certain spots and <laughs> it's hard hard to enjoy it 
Yeah, I'd probably say the same thing. There's there's a, a newer tune that I'm really into right now, and I don't know. As far as ones that I absolutely don't like, it's tough because, you know, I, th I think probably all of us rarely go back and listen to our own stuff, so it's sometimes it's hard to remember what we put out. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like there's two ways to look at it for me, like live, what do I, you know, most like playing live versus what I like hearing uh, back, and songs that seem to have stuck with us uh, as a group, it's like, look so pretty, yeah. that one seems to always just feel good, sound good. Uh, it's Take You Home as well. Yeah, Take You Home. It's always fun. And then, yeah, songs I don't Actually, like. Sh uh, shoe Stains has has uh, stuck Care around a long well. time. And it's an original format, too. Yeah. Yeah, original structure and everything. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, no, there's just... <laughs> you know, you always have those times where you revisit something, you're like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what were we saying? <laughs> Probably shouldn't have done that or could have done this. And that's where a lot of our new songs' ideas come from, is things that we could have done better. But also, I mean, I think uh, the, the albums that that we don't, like, really overthink things are maybe the albums that have actually held up yeah too. Mm, that's true we've got a question here you guys you're on with the lately what's your question uh yeah this is a two-parter have any of you ever worked at subway and <laughs> what was the price of soda at the time <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Half, Multiple subways. Half of the band. Um, <laughs> when I was at work, soda seemed expensive, so I would oftentimes uh, forget to charge for it. <laughs> so it, it 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 was often free. <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> Hi guys, love you guys. You too, man. You too. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Right, see you later. You uh, bet. That's great. Was it a, a good experience working there? It was my favorite job I've ever had. It was also really easy. Yeah, I think. I mean, uh, that first one. Yeah, we got to work with a lot of cool people. I think. Yeah. And it. So that. I mean, that was awesome. My other my other experience working in Milwaukee at Subway was not as as awesome. <laughs> but do you get a lot of like rude customers? Is that um, it was just there were some very sketchy incidences <laughs> that could have en ended badly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sam and Ryan, you guys have played with um, other. In other bands, Ryan, you were with Christopher Gold for a while, yep. right? Doing guitar, and, and Sam, you with Corey Chisel. Was ramping up to play in a, another band, did, did that take a lot of time, or was that something you just sort of picked up pretty quickly as far as learning other people's songs? We kind of always have. I mean, I've played with um, my dad a lot in uh, his bands, and so kind of... Having to learn other music has always been part of what I saw as like being a, a musician. So I don't think that was hard. I also think the other groups that I'm in are all so different that it really gave me a chance to to explore other genres and styles and stuff and that was actually really fun oh we'll take a little break here we've got a, another question you are on with the lately what's your question hey good morning um uh at lately i like your music um just wondering do you guys uh enjoy recording more like doing studio work or playing live shows and i'll take my uh answer offline thank you um, I think it's probably a bit of both, honestly, for myself. I know you tend to like. I like playing. Yeah. Playing a lot yeah. more. Yeah. yeah. They're real, really different. I think the live shows are more of a like party 
to me mm-hmm. and like um doing in studio stuff feels more creative i guess but we also tend to kind of uh write in studio too so that's probably why i guess yeah yeah very, i think very rarely do we have like a song finished when we go and record and and Part of that is probably because Sam's engineering it all, so yeah. we have the liberty to do that without having to pay a ton of money. <laughs> but yeah, all right now, uh, Brian, we need to find out what uh, your experience was playing with Christopher Gold as far as ramping up for uh, um, some shows. Yeah, with him. it was kind of the same thing. It wasn't, you know, you do your homework and stuff, and but I think just having the opportunity to play with another group of guys that are all really cool and. You know, it was a lot of fun. So, was there less pressure playing in somebody else's project versus the lately, since you're I think playing somebody else's stuff versus your own? I mean, in a way, I think there's a little bit more pressure just because, you know, you don't want to disappoint the people that you're playing with, <laughs> whereas we're used to it. <laughs> I think, <laughs> you know, when you mess up and stuff like that. But yeah, if, I mean, in our band, you kind of know each other so well that if I mean, if anything happens, you know how to cover it Mm -hmm. a bit, and that's not always the case when you're just kind of hopping in. Right. Sam, were you playing with um, with Corey at the Tim Brattler Stadium a while back? Yep. Okay, how was that experience playing in a a stadium as far as the, the echo and stuff you hear a lot about? Just performing in that kind of setting with, with the sound, was it different than playing a, a venue at a, a club or something? I'm kind of kind of weird in that I don't. Everything past the stage, I don't really notice a lot. Uh, if I'm on stage, so I mean that. Re- I mean it doesn't really matter to me, honestly. Uh, it doesn't really feel any different sound all is always terrible on stage i've like never had a good good sound on stage so it's always bad um you normally there's like a ton of light so you can't really actually see anything anyways so it's it's a a lot more about who you're actually on stage with i think and so that is just, I mean, every group is so different and so much fun. And I mean, I don't think I play with any group of people who I don't really love. So that helps a lot. Mike, I'm really, really sorry. I want to congratulate you on the, the birth of your child. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good. Is, is this my, my fifth child? Fifth child, really? Fifth, fifth child, yep. So you're used to it by now. I am very used to it. Congrats on the first four too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, what's uh, what did you name name Henry? Your child? Henry. Yeah. So how many boys versus girls do you have? There's currently? four boys and one girl. Okay. So the, yep. she's definitely going to be outnumbered. Oh, well, she's yeah, she's tough though. So. Well, you had a lot of sisters, so your daughter will have a lot of brothers. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> So we're joined by the Lately. If you've got a question, you can call 920-358-0795. Towards the end of the show, they're going to pick their favorite question, and you can win this awesome Lately prize pack that's got a hat, a shirt, CD, and a cassette. What what made you guys do the cassettes? Um, I think it was just something we wanted to do. Yeah. Kind of for ourselves almost, but that that release had gone out of print, and... We just figured, why don't we just release like a hundred tapes, just like I said, just for fun, really. <laughs> and it, did they go over pretty well, or was that sort of a, a medium that people weren't <laughs> people I mean, like, but they don't buy? <laughs> no, I, th- I think you know we probably yeah. sold like half of them or something. I at think this point. people kind of enjoy it as m- m- like a a trinket more than something that they use but yeah well so would the cassette be something you would ever do again or is it a one and done thing i, I think would. we would do it again yeah, yeah. that's fun 
Well, it's uh, as far as releasing music, <laughs> as far as releasing music, you've got some stuff on Bandcamp as well, I think, right? Yep. I mean, there's just so many platforms now. Bandcamp, you know, you guys are on Reverb Nation. Yeah, uh, it's it's hard to keep <laughs> keep track, isn't it? Is is there somebody in the band that takes care of all the social media stuff, or is it kind of spread throughout everybody? Kind of spread, honestly. Um, Jerry does. A lot of it, so <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really nice. But um, yeah, w- I think that as a group too, we are really bad at it. So like, we don't post any updates. We don't update <laughs> anything. We <laughs> we don't post shows. We don't post <laughs> releases. We don't do it. So it's um. Good luck if you're a fan. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody wants to keep tabs on you guys, is there one place that's the best, even if it's not updated often? Probably Facebook. Yeah. yeah. I think, too, as we start to do some more of these new songs, that will we'll keep people updated, too. So. <laughs> what do you guys think of the Appleton scene? I mean, you've kind of been around and, and done a lot of different things. Is the Appleton scene growing or is it shrinking, staying the same? I haven't really seen a show in a long time. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, the whole COVID thing kind of killed a, l- a lot of the show stuff that I was doing. And I really haven't had a chance to get into it again, honestly. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been so long. <laughs> Do you guys meet a lot of new friends? Have you met a lot of friends by playing shows with other bands and just kind of being at shows in the past? Almost all oh, of yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, there, there was a time where that's kind of all I did. So that was the only time that I'd hang out with anybody. It's also cool because we have you know, a a number of friends around our age, you know, that we've kind of come up at the same time. So, I mean, there's, there's bands that are, I guess, based in this area that we've met through playing back in, you know, high school and stuff, and they're still doing stuff and we're still doing stuff. So it's, it's always cool, you know, because everybody's busy, but when it comes to shows and stuff, we get a chance to kind of reconnect, you know, with some of our friends from, how many years ago? <laughs> is there a, a lot. Is there a favorite place that, that you prefer to see a show in this area? Um, honestly, I like Chadwick's, which is kind of weird because they don't really do it often. But any time that I've had a show there, it's all, always it's a hall. And I like really dig that. And like it's... It, pretty loud, but not in the harsh way. And it just feels how, like, a good show feels mm-hmm. yeah, to me. To that, yeah. But on stage, they have these hangy, hangy lights <laughs> that are, like, very big and very dangerous. For this guy. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. You need to kind of dodge them the whole time it's it's weird i don't i don't know if, if you guys had a, a memorable festival show whether it be mile of music oktoberfest uh, electric city anything that that stands out in your mind as being like the your favorite festival show you've ever played the one that stands out for me is the um blues thing that we did that was like super hot and they had those two stages like side by side it it was boulder junction not that one it was on tour somewhere i thought and then like it was like all all mud and dirt do you guys jerry do you know ohio (laughs) it was in ohio (laughs) And it was just really fun. I think because we had, like, come at it after, like, doing, like, a week or two. And just, like, we were pretty loose. 
And normally those big shows outside um, are a lot of just kind of hanging out all day and you have to like be there at two even though you don't don't start until eight and it just kind of sucks but this was a ton of fun mm -hmm. that was the giant giant rv tour right yes yep. okay that was the name of the, <laughs> the giant, giant rv <laughs> well it was so exciting to have a shower you know right on our vehicle which previously our our tour van was uh, in more or less a poor state <laughs> you guys kind of are one of the catalysts behind Code Zero Radio, because you were kind of moving through Iowa, I believe, and kind of synced up with Bob Minter, and that's kind of, you guys sort of knocked the first or the, the second domino down. Can you kind of tell me kind of your memories of, of how that all went down? I think that one was, that was the, the last night of a tour, and that was in Iowa in a cool town that we had explored all day. I know that he'd probably say otherwise. I think he, <laughs> he hated that place. Except that was an awesome show. Yeah, that that was a ton of fun. Who did we play with? Like Black Star? Black Star Alliance. Uh, Alliance. <laughs> okay. and, but yeah, we... I think it was just kind of kind of loud and cool. And like it felt like a high school show again mm -hmm. in some ways or like a house show which I love I mean those are kind of the only shows that I do like pay attention t to the audience in and those are like my favorite nights that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah. so then you met uh, met Bob and, and then I mean, then Bob moves up here. I meet Jerry. Meet yeah. Bob. I mean, everybody kind of uh, that one night. So that's that's pretty awesome. Um, is there one thing that you guys would change as far as the the music scene in Appleton? And I'm not like fishing for anything. I'm just asking: Is there anything that you would like to see changed in this area? And I know I'll I'll throw one out there just to start, but we hear a lot about more all age venues. I think that would be good. Uh... Cause, cause yeah, even, you know, people that we know, they're 19 and stuff, you know, it's a little bit of a, you get them asking like, okay, well, when are you playing and stuff? And it's like, unfortunately there's a limited availability of, of shows where they can actually come and come and see us, you know? So. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it is improving, but I would really like to see all night shows kind of die more and have it's just so much more fun playing our along with two other bands who you love and have it be more of a community thing i think and that is the trend that i think that we are seeing but that obviously there's a long ways how do you guys feel about go. shows like I'll call out reptile palace who they typically don't start before 10 o'clock at night the shows are <laughs> until one in the morning now that you guys are a little older do you like doing the late shows are you early risers or ready for bed around 10 o'clock they're getting harder yeah, well, <laughs> i just don't get it like who goes to that like <laughs> um anytime that you go to like a show that has like tickets and stuff the show starts at like seven and i think that should be the way that you do it too because then after the show is over you can like do things whereas w when the show ends at like one you're hauling i mean hauling stuff out until two at least then you're i mean if the show isn't in Appleton or something, you're home at like three or four, so you can't really do anything afterwards or hang out with the like people who came to see you or any of that stuff. It just, I don't get it. 
Good answer. I like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the real deal, yeah. All right, so I again, we're up against the clock here, but you guys have such a, a great discography. And the 4th of July, it's just a, a great song. Um, you've had behind the scenes, you had the... the is this Tiger Side Up? Was that the yeah. name? <laughs> Tiger Side Up. Um, old news. I mean, just a, a ton of great uh, CDs here. And it's like, it, it's hard since all of it's not up online. It's kind of, it makes it sort of fun because it, you have to kind of track it down. Have you guys heard or do you have any opinions on the exclusive companies slowly closing down? I haven't. Yeah. I have not heard that. I have not either. Uh, very sad about it. Been going to exclusive companies since, gosh, since I, I can't even remember. Oh, yeah. I can't remember a time when I haven't been going there, like almost on a weekly basis. So it's 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 very sad. Yeah, my dad, uh, he he worked there for like ten years in uh, the eighties. So that's the one on Northland. He worked at that one, and I think he opened. The Oshkosh store or something, too. Um, I'd have to ask him. That was a little before my time. But. <laughs> well, and it's just, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I think it's very true. Like, you have your, your local record shop and you kind of like, you know, the people that work there and you, you know, can have actual conversations with them and stuff like that. And I think when you lose that stuff, that's that's kind of more the... You know, I mean, it's easy to buy records and stuff, obviously, but you can't really replace that too easily, I think. We're gonna, going to uh, play a track. This is called Happy For You. What's the story behind this one? This is a, one of those songs that we've had a long time. We, I think, released it on one album, the <laughs> earliest one. Yeah, that earliest uh, EP that we recorded in Madison, it was, <clears throat> we released it then, and then we haven't touched it really since, but now we've kind of gone back, and a lot of the music is similar, but we've completely rewritten the rest of it, so...
Was the lately i want to thank thank you for coming out and doing the show this morning really appreciate it and looking forward to hearing what, what you guys have coming out in the future and a, a special thank you to the bear as well jerry you want to step in on camera quick no <laughs> you can listen to jerry's show tuesday nights on code zero radio it's called amped up